Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning, Iowa Catholic Radio, Be Not Afraid, Father PJ, Father Fabian, Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. So let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Put out on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you so remarkable endowed St. Mary, St. Margaret Mary, so that we may come to know that love of Christ which surpasses all understanding and be utterly filled with your fullness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have had a beautiful week. Beautiful week in terms of a spiritual life in self. So first of all, Father, uh, last week we were talking about the Our Lady of Rosary, the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In fact, the October month is the month of the Holy Rosary as well. Mm -hmm. But also the Sacred Heart of Jesus in the presence of uh, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque show us that something deeply encountered in our heart with the real presence of God through the devotion of the Blessed Virgin Mary as well. Yeah, so there's um, there's a deep connection between Marian devotion and devotion to the Sacred Heart. Uh, devotion to the Sacred Heart in more recent days has probably been displaced a little bit by devotion to the Divine Mercy, but these are really sort of two sides of the same coin. The, the Divine Mercy devotion, I think, is rightly understood as sort of a contemporary expression of the historical devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The rays uh, from the side of the Lord in the Divine Mercy image are coming from the wounds, it, the wound in his heart, um, and, and, and it's this understanding that Christ's heart both the 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 human heart, the physical heart of the human, uh, the physical heart of Christ in His human nature, is emblematic of the heart in the way that we more typically use that uh, in as the sort of locus of emotion and will and that kind of thing, and that and that that's what God did was in assuming a human nature, He made it possible for Him to love us and to for us to love Him, not only as a remote deity but as one just like us, to know the human love of God. When you, when you use the expression, the love of the human God, that expression moved me a lot, especially when we uh, celebrate yesterday an amazing pub, John 23rd, mm -hmm. the good pub, el Papa Bueno. Mm -hmm. So that is an, a remarkable kind of heart in a very hostile times. And a very complicated scenario. So those kind of heart enlighten us, you and me as a priest, to have and a heart of the shepherd of souls. That's right. Pope John the Twenty Third, of course, writing Pachamenteris right on the heels of World War Two, so the, the great the greatest debacle thus far in human history, um, and and uh, you had this fat happy grandpa who suddenly just Always. just put his arms all the way around the world. Just it was like he was hugging everybody. Not right? a tall one, a little bit fat. It's literally a grandpa, you know, literally yeah. a grandpa. And so it's 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 important, I think, for us as priests. Of course, I, I, I it would be hard to imagine a, a, a priest who better embodied sort of the sacred heart thing than 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 John the twenty third. At the same time, I think it's worth saying, you know, there's a tendency um, in devotional literature, devotional art, um, to sometimes portray the sacred heart or the divine mercy both as this sort of effete. Uh, feminine, sort of, um, uh, not uh, not strong, not masculine, not, not vigorous, right? Not Jesus. vigorous, correct. And um, and, and and I think this is exactly wrong. <laughs> I, Absolutely, I, I, I think this flips the idea. Um, not not because of an especially strong sort of gendered thing, um, but that because this isn't simply um, the answer to the angry God. Sometimes you'll hear this, right? That the Sacred Heart devotion erupts at a time when nobody's receiving communion, and so it's just a way of like like bribing people and deceiving communion at least once a month or something like that. And there's there are elements of truth to that, but there's something much more profound going on in uh, in the revelations that Saint Margaret Mary relates to us, um, and in the devotions as they uh, as they come about. My favorite image of our Lord. So I, I have not liked Sacred Heart images. I tend to find them distasteful. But in more recent years, my favorite image of our Lord is of the Sacred Heart. It's out of the retreat center at Griswold, and it's of our Lord seated at table. And he, he's got a chalice in front of him, and he's breaking up the host over the chalice like the priest does at Mass. But the host that he breaks is his heart. Is his heart. My God. So I tell people this in the confessional all the time. 
um, when we hand out the Sacred Heart statue at the Spanish masses, I always tell them this. The, the Sagrada Corazón es un corazón roto. The Sacred Heart of Jesus is a heart broken, it, broken open, right? Um, it's broken open out of pain, but it's broken open in love for other people. That's not weak. That's strong. When, when, when you describe that, oh, my skin is <laughs> moving me a lot because uh, this is literally happened mm. at the mass. Every time. He had been offered his heart to fit in his people. And if we're doing wow. our jobs as priests, then we're meant to be doing the very same thing. Absolutely. In our, in our pastoral service as well. But at the same time, we have a high level of spirituality when we're talking about the heart, uh, the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. But the, at the same time, the Blessed Virgin Mary, a heart broken in love, had broken in love. It's not easy to understand that, but only by love. Well, you know, it, it's not been that many weeks uh, that we celebrated uh, the exaltation of the cross and Our Lady of Sorrows. And Our Lady of Sorrows um, really uh, articulates this, I think, exceptionally well, um, uh, that uh, she, she carries in her, with her, right, all the joys and our, all the sorrows that sort of can be known by, by, by a human woman. And our Lord brings unto himself all the joys and all the sorrows known by the sons of men. And, uh, and what this does, right, is it redeems the whole of the human experience. There's nothing that we can know, nothing that we can experience, no suffering we can suffer, no delight that we can enjoy that doesn't live inside the human heart of God. Sacred Heart of Jesus, pray for us. Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online, ashworthvision.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Leonetti in the morning is provided by Five Sons Naturescapes. Five Sons Naturescapes is a Catholic veteran-owned family company providing premium outdoor landscaping. Clean up and restore outdoor living space with retaining walls, privacy fencing, pergolas, paver sidewalks, and patios. Issues with soil settling and water around the foundation and yard? Five Sons Naturescapes can grade and install drainage tile to help. Five Sons Naturescapes online at fivesonsnaturescapes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. What great news for donors to the Catholic Tuition Organization. You now receive 75%. Yes, 75% of your donation back in Iowa tax credits beginning January 1st of this year. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. Best gift ever. Online, ctoiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Uh, you mentioned uh, before, <laughs> during the break, better to, to say, an especially story about John 23rd. Could you please share with us? So those that have been visitors to the rectory at Christ the King know that there's a picture of my father as you come down the stairs and go toward the main, the front door. Um, and it's, it's my dad and uh, Matt McCoy, who's since gone to God, but whose wife, Marianne, probably is listening. Um, and uh, St. John the 23rd, um, my, my, my dad and, and, and Mr. McCoy were able to go to Rome uh, in 1962 
and um, and the, the picture is taken um, just a few days before St. John called the Vatican II. And so I keep the picture where I do because it reminds me that nobody in the picture knows that the world's about to change, that the man in the picture is about to change the world. Absolutely. And, and then it helps me, I hope, um, do the day better because <laughs> I try and keep the same thing in mind. That is a very remarkable experience in a spiritual life. Uh, also, this coming Friday, we, Father, we have the uh, Feast of St. Teresa of Jesus, mm -hmm. of Jesus, better to say. And sometimes it's confusing between the little flower right. with uh, Santa Teresa de Avila. Right. This is an, a very remarkable Spain, Spain saint. And for the Spanish people, she... A mm. strong character, right? A strong character in a in a monastic uh, renovation as well at that time, you know. Yeah, Teresa of Avila was tough, real tough. Um, uh, you know, I I grew up here in town at St. Teresa of the Child Jesus Parish, which is the one named after the little flower. And in more recent years, we've started re kind of retranslating that person's name as Therese rather than Teresa in order to try and, and distinguish between the two. You're right. But what's important is that St. Therese, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus took her name after Teresa of Avila. So, and that was on purpose, right? This is a very interesting story. So, so, so saints, right, are named after saints. <laughs> saints make saints, right? And that's Inspired. why that, that Inspired inspire life. us, right? And, 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 and intercede for us. And so this is very important for those of you in charge of naming babies. <laughs> Give them good patrons. Absolutely. It can wind up mattering a lot. And um, one of the very characteristic, characteristical, uh, type of woman with a very courage woman is this woman was an, a deeply spiritual person that also moving from these spiritual reflections in a formal renovation of the Carmelite order as well. So St. Teresa is one of the most important figures in what we call the Catholic Reformation or the Counter-Reformation, um, which, uh, which, which was the period immediately following the Protestant Reformation, which... Um, involved uh, Catholics who took very, very seriously the Protestant critique. So they didn't just dismiss Luther or Calvin or his, their, their followers out of hand. They didn't just say, you know, Lutherans are dumb or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, they took very seriously the critique, but they said, we're not going to split the church over this. The, if what they're saying is we Catholics are being insufficient in our Christian life and witness, well, then we got to double down on our witness, so the Carmelites, who historically had been renowned for their asceticism and, 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 and their deep, profound uh, mystical lives, had really, like, were just kind of fat, lazy, rich people. And so, um, so she and John of the Cross, her companion, um, who did the same thing for the men, just doubled down. And they said, if you're going to be part of this thing, you're going to do it for real or you're not going to do it. And what they wound up doing, it was a really ingenious way to reform an organization. And um, I know that organization management programs now actually talk about how they did this. Uh, because what they did was they said, all right, we're not going to spend our energy fighting the people who don't want to play. We're going to do our thing, and we're going to let the competition decide who wins. And, of course, when you have real saints running around, fake saints aren't very attractive anymore. And so, and so um, John and Teresa are saints, and the people they were fighting against, nobody remembers. And Just to give you a little bit flavor about this incredible and a deeply spiritually spiritual from Teresa de Avila, just listen carefully. Let nothing affright thee, nothing dismay thee. All is passing, God ever remains. Patient obtains all. Whoever possesses God cannot lack anything. God alone sufficient. That's right. So, wow. <laughs> so, so, so Teresa, like John, was an exceptional poet and left much of her writing in the form of poetry, which is still sung in Spain and Latin America today. Many of the hymns that you know well ultimately came from the pen of St. Teresa and, and St. John of the Cross. Um, I think what's important here, gang, is to, is to recognize that, that living the Christian, there's simply nothing more important than living the Christian life authentically, which is different than saying uh, living the Christian life perfectly. Uh, Teresa was a hard woman. She was a hard woman to live a tough with. one. And, 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 and as a result, she could come off as kind of abrasive. Like people would definitely use a word for her now that I'm not allowed to on the radio. Like she was, she, that's the kind of person she was. She'd get perceived that way by people because she was so kind of tough. She had to be in context. So did that, did that mean she attained perfect moral perfection in her lifetime? No, of course not. That's crazy. But she wound up way better than she started off. 
And, and, and she allowed herself to know the forgiveness of God as she recognized her own failure and every day recognized her own failure more and more. And confident love to God that helping her also to be confident about God's vocation. That's it. That is very, very important and remarkable. Sometimes people said, oh, too strong for me. No, be confident with God means be confident also obeying God. She also, you know, famously advised, um, people were asking about confessors, and she, she said, I don't need a holy confessor. I need a smart one. Holiness I can sort out on my own. Um, and, uh, and again, that sounds pretty abrasive, but what she, what she was after, right, and I think this is important for people coming to the sacrament, um, the priest can't just sort of zap his own personal holiness onto you. He can communicate uh, sanctifying grace in the sacrament, um, but, uh, but, but the counsel that he offers is really ultimately intended to help you let God do what God's trying to do in you, not just give you the, the magic pill to make your sins go away. Approaching Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. <laughs> I mean. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Blessman International. According to a global food security report, more than 820 million people in the world are hungry today. None of us can help all of them. But how about one? One child. Blessman International provides 60,000 children in South Africa with a daily hot meal, place of safety, educational experience, and spiritual development. Learn more at blessmaninternational.org. Blessmaninternational.org. Thank you, Blessman International, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. Beelder Can Construction. Not going along with the crowd will help you stand out in the crowd. Beelder Can Construction proudly supports Iowa Catholic Radio. Beelder Can Construction is a commercial general contractor providing pre construction, estimating, and scheduling services through completion of construction. We can build projects ranging from tenant improvements and historical renovations to high rise buildings. We build confidence. Learn more about the nearly 40 projects in the Des Moines metro area completed by Beelder Can Construction by visiting www.bdconstruct.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Christ is the Answer with Father John Ricardo is provided by Confluence Brewing Company, brewed locally and featuring regular, seasonal, and limited release beers available at local stores, bars, and restaurants. Confluence Brewing Company at 1235 Thomas Beck Road, off the bike trail south of Grays Lake, and online at confluencebrewing.com. Confluence Brewing Company offers curbside service and would like to thank you for your support. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. When we're talking about certain saints like Santa Teresa de Avila, some people said, it's too tough life. She's too tough. When we're looking for the discipline in terms of spirituality, the saints show us an strongest life. St. John 23rd helped us also to understand that we have to be strong in terms of faith, but at the same time, tremendous tender and loving heart as well. Yeah. And this coming Sunday, we have an amazing piece of the gospel that shows us what is the meaning to be a Catholic into the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. How demanding is God's love for us? So the setup for this, of course, is, is the sons of Zebedee have come and asked to sit at Christ's right and left hand. And, um, and Jesus, of course, questions them. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? And they said to him, we can. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. And Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life 
as a ransom for the many. Father, this uh, first part of the of the gospel is very interesting. Uh, we sometimes request to God and a, and a very, very uh, arrogant yeah. request. I want to be next to you, God, okay, but without pain. <laughs> I want this, but without the suffering. suffering. I want this, but without any kind of complication. Easy going, easy going. And it's not a cross. The cross demands sacrifice mm. and died. Our ego, our uh, highly demanding attitude sometimes as a human being and surrounded into God's will. It's where that intuition of St. Teresa's in the poem we read before the break is so important. Patience conquers all. Um, one of the things I do, I'm not a patient man by disposition, as my staff will be not very... Not only you. <laughs> Believe me. Not only you. But one of the things I do is I look for occasions to test my patients ahead of time so that I've, I kind of build my patients up like a muscle. So, like, I have, I have developed the habit. I don't do it 100% of the time, but probably 85. Um, I get in the longest line at the store. I always get in the longest line at the store. And the reason I do it is because it only ever takes two or three minutes longer. But it forces me to be patient in a way that I'm not inclined to on my own. And I find that when I do this, I'm much more productive. I'm much more helpful. I'm much more patient when I'm working with other people in ways that matter more. And when you mentioned the word patient, uh, sometimes people, lay people, uh, believe or request more patience for us as a priest that, that normal people can do. And in our human condition, completely human being condition, we cannot presume that we have all the graces and all the virtues in just in one packet. Yeah, no, I mean, people's expectations of priests are in general, like, wildly unrealistic, and they put pressure on us that would, like, make most people run screaming, and we don't get paid, and it's a mess, right? But but, but the fact that anybody stays in the priesthood is a sign that, like, that isn't what any of this is for. Absolutely. It, it's, you know, I often say the parish priest especially, right, um, we don't have jobs where the original stay-at-home dads. So the reason the pastor is located at a place, the reason historically and in many places he lives on site is on purpose. He's like the dad who's always at home, who's there to make sure and manage that things are, 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 are working okay. Now, that isn't to say that priests are supposed to sit in their rectory all day. That's where people make the mistake. They think that we just sit around waiting to be needed. Any parish of size, that can't and isn't the case. But what it does do is it situates us. It puts us in a position where we're able to take this cup, this chalice, that has been offered by the Lord. And, and this is the reason, you know, the, the association with the chalice at Mass. You know, the chalice uh, coming to us from Judaism, right, is both a cup of suffering and a cup of life. And so you have to drink from the chalice that the Lord did in the garden at Gethsemane. Um, the chalice which he prayed would pass him by, the chalice of real suffering, the chalice of bitterness and sorrow, the chalice of the exile and of, of slavery. And you have to lift the chalice of life, uh, the, the, the chalice of forgiveness and of mercy and of hope, um, the, 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 the chalice that's offered in order to pay vows before the people, um, what we now call the cup of salvation, which ultimately brings us to eternal life. And uh, I think the, the same as... As me, Father, you have been joined in each moment in the parish, multiple moments, to drink this chalice. Oh, every in day. A very, every in day. a very unpredictable situations that we are completely out of the page and we have to face with the grace of God, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I think especially significant that, um, that he connects the chalice with baptism, um, which, of course, connects for us with baptism and, and, and Holy Communion. Um, you know, I think sometimes we, we think of Holy Communion as a thing we do, or maybe a, a prize we get, sort of little Jesus vitamin to pump me through the week or something like that. And, um, and this is, it's really the opposite. Holy Communion always looks backward to the moment of our baptism and the event of Christ's suffering and death and forward to the moment of our own death and of the end of the world. Uh, and, and the new kingdom, um, which we're promised and in which we already share every time we come to Mass. Father, approaching our ending program, please send us to growing in patience <laughs> in our ministry. <laughs> May the passion of our Lord Jesus and the merits and prayers of the Blessed Virgin, St. Joseph, St. Teresa, and all the saints grant you all the patience you need and the endurance to persevere to the end. The Father, and the, and the Son, Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Be not afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Mm -hmm.
Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. 